Biobalance HealthCast, episode 97, Testosterone Deficits in Young Men. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today we're going to talk about treating young men for a lack of testosterone, and I'm sure that most people don't think that that's an issue, and it's not a, it's not a common issue. But it is a big issue because it falls between the specialties. Well, it, it's, it's interesting how serendipity works because mm -hmm. you have a reputation and have earned it through the years as the hormone queen because yeah. of what you know. <laughs> yeah. you, you evolved out of a general gynecological and OBGYN mm -hmm. practice into a specialization on hormone treatments and hormone replacement mm -hmm. and especially focusing on testosterone replacement in women, mm -hmm. which is not a mainstream idea, and, and mm -hmm. that's what you're pushing mm -hmm. uphill against constantly. But it's a is great to say, idea because it solves so many problems. Oh my God, yes. And so because you are now known as the specialist of note <laughs> on yeah. that area, doctors in this area who have encountered hormone deficiencies refer to you. Right. And especially mm -hmm. in other specialty areas that encounter hormone deficiencies in men. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you know, I don't know enough about this, but Kathy does. Mm -hmm. And so they have sent you, and doctors in, in the area and mm -hmm. around the state, have sent you young adolescent males mm -hmm. who are not developing, quote, normally or appropriately, mm -hmm. and they have concerns about testosterone. And so you are the go-to person for that. Yeah, and by default, I am the pediatrician. By default. Because these young men fall in between pediatrics. Yes. Where they really don't know how much testosterone to give them. So they give them a little bit because they have to give them something. So they give them enough for an 80-year-old man. And the poor child, poor young man, is looks similar to a girl. He has breasts. He really, has More feminine fat. or androgynous? Well, more feminine. More feminine. Higher voice. Okay. He has what looks like breast tissue and is breast tissue and has more hips. It doesn't mean the, hmm. the, the bones have moved. It means that the fat deposition is on his hips and not like most men who are straight and have muscle. He has fat Almost instead. Almost like a eunuch. Yes. And, and that, that's, eunuchs have their testicles removed. Well, it's an artificial creation, that. but that's what yes. happens afterwards. Yes, because... They, and the Nazis did a lot of that in World War II, and oh, that's dear, exactly what they found. <laughs> no, they did. I know, but and, and, this is but, a natural occurrence in these poor young men. And that's what the problem is. It's not artificially caused mm -mm. by some intervening force. Their bodies aren't developing. And so then you, you, you get them. These doctors say, I don't know what to do with this. Well, some of them actually work them up. They uh -huh. actually do a little work up, and they say, um, I did your genetics, and they're either normal or not normal. Okay. Because and when you say that, tell people what okay. that means. That means I they, did your genetics. <laughs> okay, doc. <laughs> that means they see how many chromosomes you have, and there are some men that have two X chromosomes and a Y. Not just one X and one Y, and X's are the female chromosomes, mm -hmm. Y's are the males. So if you have XXY, it's called Kleinfelter's syndrome. It was named after some... Poor guy that had this. So remember your basic biology yeah. class where, where you do the <laughs> alleles and the meiosis and the mitosis and the division. It's not that complicated. It's yeah. X and Y. And we all kind of understand that. Right. We always say, oh, there's too many Y chromosomes. Women say there's too many Y chromosomes in the room. We can't, we don't have a voice, you know. So we use that as a colloquialism. What? But I'm sorry I didn't hear you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to speak to you because he's not listening. <laughs> the... Um, these young men have two X's and a Y, so that takes over and gives them infertile infertility. They cannot make sperm. Their testicles don't make And that's work. a lifetime issue. That's a because lifetime Because of their issue. genetics, they're not ever going to be fertile. Right. Okay. So they're going to have, they have testicles that make very little testosterone, that make no sperm, so it's not a fertility issue. This is a health male issue. They need to feel and act and sound like males. 
and they need to be sexually competent when they get into their 20s, I mean, late teens and 20s, that's part of being male. So that requires testosterone. Yeah, I mean, the psychological issues of that and the cultural issues of that are enormous for these young men. Uh, young adolescent males in a masculine community, of seventh, eighth, ninth grade boys, there's so much bullying that takes place mm -hmm. and there are so many messages about acceptability and inclusion and being a guy and being mm -hmm. a guy's guy that just is so damaging and harmful for these guys mm -hmm. just among the community of boys. And, and then if they survive it and they're not suicidal and, and they, they have support and help and they grow up, then they have to look at uh, mate selection criteria. Mm -hmm. and are they going to be presentable in terms of a selection pool for women to say, I'll take that one. Uh, right, but, but are they going to be functional sexually too? And that's a huge issue as well. It doesn't require sperm, okay, to be functional sexually, it requires testosterone. So these young right. men... So the sperm is about reproduction, yes. not about sexual performance. Right, but testosterone is about looking like a man, sounding like a man, your brain thinking like a man and as well. I mean, this is high levels of testosterone, 10 right. times what we need. And actually being able to be potent or not have erectile That whole boing thing. Boing! In a, yeah, yeah that yet. thing. Yeah. So these That's young men term. are brought to me often by their mothers who have no idea what to do. And they're, they're, so, they're so upset because no one has been able to figure this out. They've been to you know, like a pediatric hospital, and they've been to doctors who take care of infertility, but these boys aren't, it, they're not an infertility case because they don't have sperm. It's not that issue, and they tend to be not taken care of by these guys. So either their pediatrician or someone else, or they heard me on television talking about testosterone, and they know their sons need that, and they bring them to me. Now, when I know that there's a genetic issue, and I know that there's no testosterone, these men need testosterone. They do not need something to stimulate their testicles to make some because it's not going to happen. They okay. need to cut to the chase and they need testosterone and they need a high level of testosterone. Young men, that's when you guys have the highest levels when you're in your late teens and that's when you start developing everything as a, as a male. So mm -hmm. I try to um, bring their testosterone level into the thousand range like Women the would be like total less than a hundred free testosterone total into total. the thousand range, okay. and then free testosterone into the two hundred something range, okay. and those are the two parameters that I look for. And then I look for the symptoms going away, for them to start to look like a man, not be depressed. See, they can't sleep because there's no testosterone. Right. They're depressed. They have no energy. They, they gain weight. They gain they get weight. Man boobs. Yeah. Uh, they don't have good muscle mass. They can't, uh, they can't, mood they're not in sports because they're embarrassed to be in the gym. I mean, right, right. and so when we give these men back their testosterone, they're normal. They look normal. They sound normal. They start being accepted at school. They start being accepted in society. They get girlfriends. I mean, it's a huge change and it's very important that that happens. What about secondary uh, sexual characteristics like facial hair? And, and armpit that, hair. Yes, and, all and they get all that and they get the bad smell and all that stuff that you mm -hmm. smell when you're in junior high school. Yeah. It's everywhere. You know, they, they get that as well because that's part of the testosterone uh, turning into DHT. They have that. They can do that. And so they make dihydrotestosterone out of it and they get all these other fun things too. But they get facial hair. They start shaving. They, men don't always get chest hair until they're older. But they, they start getting the secondary sexual characteristics. Yeah, and then their head hair starts to fall down onto their shoulders and their back. And yeah, well, that's much that's later. That's the whole evolutionary. But yeah. these men are going to need testosterone their whole lives. And at okay. this stage, they're going to need more than they are the rest of the time. So then you get to the question, how much testosterone do you give them as you track them through their mm -hmm. lives? And what's the delivery methodology? Because there, right. there are a lot of controversies and side mm -hmm. effect concerns and issues mm -hmm. around administering testosterone uh, to men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so with an, a young adolescent male, you, you, you were starting to say how you identify the correct dosage for that male. Right. Um, let's break it down to young, or excuse me, adult healthy, ma healthy males 
make 10 milligrams of testosterone a day. Right. And that's okay? not sperm, that's just that's testosterone. That's testosterone. Right. Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. It's putting your te testicles putting te 10 milligrams of testosterone into your blood every day. Okay? So I try to equate that with what I give them. Now, that's not always enough because sometimes the testosterone I give them isn't as good as what they would have made themselves. So I have to go a little bit higher than 10, okay, to actually give them enough. Now, I usually start with shots just because giving pellets to a young man for the next, you know, 40, 50 years is going to cause them to scar. It's going to be difficult for them to find somebody at right now to do this, and hopefully we'll have more people treating men of this type with hormone pellets. But I start with shots. It doesn't always work. Sometimes they just get all the side effects and they don't feel better and they don't look better because they just, they just metabolize it differently. Shots aren't bioidentical. They're not perfect testosterone, as you know. So then if that doesn't work, then we do, then we do pellets. And I give them quite a few pellets. Usually there's almost um, 2,000 milligrams to last six months, mm -hmm. okay? So if you do the division, that's a little more than 10 a day. So the so, way the pellets work is they're inserted into the fat tissue of the hip. And, or the love handle. Or the love handle. Because they don't really have hips And they are they're <laughs> reabsorbed on demand by the body. So as right. the body needs it, it goes to the pellet or the pellet the generates pellet it. The pellet pulls it out by uh, dissolving in fat tissue and also blood flow by it. So if you're working out, you're pulling more testosterone out. So the more blood flow that goes through those fat cells, the more it's picking up and carrying with Another it. Another reason I need to give the boys more or the young men more because they are on teams. They start working out. They start getting muscle. They're start, right. They start becoming really active like all other boys in their teens in general. And so there's a lot of blood flow going by those pellets. So we have to mm -hmm. sometimes up the dose to a level that would not be comfortable maybe for a pediatrician. So do they learn to track it, they and their mothers and families, mm -hmm. by secondary uh, observable traits like moodiness, teariness, mm -hmm. uh, loss of energy, mm -hmm. sleep problems, or do you just track it by blood tests every six months? Oh, I mean, I check their blood, and that's very important to know that they're getting the right amount, but really it's about symptoms, and they know when they need it. Yeah. And they're, they need so much <laughs> A you day. feel yourself fall off the edge. Yeah. That, that whole lack of energy, it's almost like a depressive cycle. It is. Uh, th that the energy to function and the mood stabilization of yourself as normal goes away. Well, there's an article in Gender Specific Medicine this month. Gender Specific Medicine is a magazine that does great re research on both men and women, and it's the Harvard female doctors, okay, mm. in every specialty. And they had to take up a collection because Harvard refused to fund them. So they sent all the women doctors in the United States a request for 300 bucks. And I donated 600 bucks because I really wanted this, you know, this is over 10 years ago. And they're a hit. I mean, there's so many people that get this, this um, journal. journal and, and now there's a specialty called gender-specific medicine. So they study men and women, but they studied men and testosterone. And in this month's... Um, journal, they said, men need testosterone to not be depressed. They finally figured that out. I mean, that's kind of a common thing that we look at, but sometimes you need a study to show that that's really true. And they did the study. They didn't study women yet, so I'm waiting for the women's study. Men may need testosterone not to be depressing as well. Well, that's true. In it relationships. Kind of, yeah, if, if you're not responsive over. and you don't have energy and you're not alive, that's pretty depressing to be around. Yeah, we call that a lump at our house. Yeah. Just sitting there like a lump. <laughs> sitting there like a lump with a remote control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lump, a remote control, and a recliner. But testosterone fixes that. <laughs> okay. So, so that's one type of young man that comes to see me. Yeah. Another type of young man is a, man, a young man that doesn't know why he has low testosterone. We do his genetics. It has nothing to do with the genetics, which is like your blueprint for your body. It doesn't have to do with what you were born with. It has to do with something that happened afterwards. It is, can be mumps. It can be trauma to the testicles. It can be um, stress. It can be that you were never really born with much testicular tissue, and so you don't make as much as other people. But we do all the blood tests to see. The big, the big question and the big decision point is, 
Is it your brain, your pituitary, or is it your testicle? Is it above the waist or below the waist that's not functioning? And how do you assess to see which it is? Well, we look at young men who are not taking, you can't be taking anything. We have to look at them without any kind of no hormones. Claritin, no Claritin, uh, no... No hormones. I mean, no sometimes horm they come to me on really low-dose hormones, mm. and, and I have to take them off for two weeks to see what their baseline is. Then we look at FSH and LH from their brain, the two hormones that stimulate the testicles to make sperm, FSH, and testosterone, LH. So we look at those two to see if the brain's working. Is it stimulating the testicle and the testicle's fine, but the brain's not fine? Or is it the testicle that's not responding to the brain? Okay, so if the hormones from the pituitary are very, very low and the testosterone is very, very low, then in general, it's the brain's problem. So we need to stimulate the testicles with that same type of hormone to make it make testosterone, or at least try it out. Because I guess you could, in some people you have both problems. I've had one person with both problems, not many. So, so for those men out there who are not scientifically inclined, if you can visualize a battery terminal with a positive and a negative, uh, and you put a trickle charger on it that comes from the brain, the pituitary, and sends pulses to both the positive terminal mm -hmm. and the negative terminal, you've got, uh, an alternating current pulsation mm -hmm. that develops sperm and testosterone. Right. So right. if you need the trickle charger, and some of these guys <laughs> do, that's what she determines through these assessments. That's right. And then the opposite of that is when we have normal FSH and LH, mm -hmm. then there's no testosterone, then it's an, we call it an end organ problem. That means the testicles aren't responding. There's some reason they're not responding. Then we ultrasound them to see if they're normal. We have a urologic consult. We make sure that there's nothing anatomically wrong with them. And usually varicoceles aren't, aren't causing this. Usually that's a sperm problem, but not a testosterone problem. So when we don't find anything, oftentimes urologists will do biopsies, but I'm not, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Just to see if there's anything there that can actually be worked with. Yeah, it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> or it's not, yeah, or and it's not. sadly, yeah. if it's not, then we have to assume and we have to check a sperm count and know that there's no sperm. Okay. If there's no sperm and no testosterone, then I'm not going to be able to make them fertile. So that right. young man's not going to be fertile. So his biggest concern is get him testosterone so that he can develop and he can be healthy. Because as we know from our other podcasts, Low testosterone leads to high cholesterol, it leads to high inflammation in the tissues, it leads to um, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, inability to think. And it, I mean, there's so many things that it leads to when you have no testosterone. So these kids are crippled from the beginning. So we need to give them their testosterone back. So if the testicles aren't possibly fertile, that's what we do right away. If they are, if there's sperm but no testosterone, then we try to stimulate the testicles just like we would if they didn't have any stimulation front to the ch trickle charger. Mm -hmm. So we try to stimulate them and see if we can make testosterone as well as, of course, sperm, but they've already got those. Okay. So we try to, it's, we use HCG as our injection and we stimulate that and give it a two month trial. HCG looks a lot like LH, that hormone that stimulates testosterone, so we use that, and it's available. HCG is the pregnancy hormone, believe it or not. And HCG stimulates the testicle. If it doesn't stimulate in two months, then we just replace them with testosterone because they need it. This is one of those things where you need to jump to the next step. We always talk to the parents if they're younger than 18. If they're older, then we talk to them. They rarely bring their parents in if they're older than that. And then we get an idea of how important fertility is and how and how important their testosterone is. Right. Some young men, as we talked about before this, bank their sperm. If they have sperm, sometimes they bank it and they save it if they have the money to do that. 
and some, some young men go. Pfft. Because fertility will always be a risk if they don't have the testosterone. The, the two things have to work in tandem. Mm -hmm. You have to have the sperm, but then you also have to have the testosterone to trigger the arousal and the interest and the sexual functioning. And the so mature you need the maturation balance. of the sperm. You need the balance aspect of that. Mm -hmm. So for these young guys that are not genetically fertile, have the potential to be fertile, mm -hmm. then the conversation becomes, what do we do? Because if you give them high doses of testosterone over a long period of time, they become... They can become infertile. They can become infertile. So if you so give it's them a the risk. necessary dose right. to be really male, then you may scar the tubules that are making the sperm. Just like the Fram oil filter commercial from 15 years ago, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. You have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. What's the best intervention for the results? And, and then that goes back to the whole relationship with the doctor who will sit down and talk you through the cost-benefit ratio. Mm -hmm. and, and for younger children, you have to have the parents involved. For older, uh, more mature ones, age-wise, legal-wise, mm -hmm you don't have to have the parents involved. Right, that's right. So and the men can make their own decisions. Sometimes they bring in their parents just to help them make the decision or their girlfriends or their, you know, or their wives. Yeah, if you've gotten married and the whole question of fertility and having children comes up and who's at fault and why is this a problem. And, and nobody's at fault, you can't I know, be at fault for this. I know, but that's this. the way they reason and that's what you have to teach them about and educate them about. Right, this it's is not a 15-minute appointment. No. This is a this is a 45 minute to an hour appointment every time and that's about all they can take. But also fortunately <laughs> it's a really rare condition. That's true. But as a parent watching the development of a young male if you have those concerns one of the things that's beginning to be available mm -hmm. is information like the information that you have that say there's a thing to consider and if you discover that's what you're looking at there's a treatment. That's right. So we'd, we'd like to have, I'd like to have a different specialty doing this mm -hmm. and doing it the way we have learned to do it. We've right. taken some information from the in, uh, infertility industry or in, infertility specialties and also the pediatric and also the adult in, uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. But I'd love it if somebody would take this over because this is, yeah. you know, this is not my specialty. I'm glad to take care of these guys. But, you know, in general, I'm an anti-aging doctor. Well, you were telling me off camera that you were talking to some uh, hospital staff in Kansas City last week. Mm -hmm. And that they were telling you, other than you, they just know one doctor in the state. That <laughs> one, so there's two of you in this state right. that they can refer to for that. And that doctor is a specialist in transgender. So I'm sure the waiting room would not be very friendly <laughs> to these young men who know their gender, just need more hormone, but then again, yeah. they know hormones. Right. So right. they understand testosterone and they understand the replacement of it. So you're right, there's very few people doing this and I guess that's commensurate with the number of men that need this. But I think there's a lot of men out there that don't even know that this is the case. No one's even tested Well, and they may not it. be severe enough to trigger that register in terms of low testosterone or low sperm, but mm -hmm. they can be lower than ideal Mm -hmm. And that can affect them developmentally. And the more, I mean, and, and they're caught in that in between zone of when do they age out of pediatric mm -hmm. focus and come into an adult doctor relationship. Right. So it's, it's something to notice, something to be aware of, uh, and something to be reassured that increasingly there's knowledge and treatment available. And if this is you, that you should look for somebody who takes care of testosterone in young men. And, and in other states, it may be quite different. But in our area, it's not. Right. So we, this is something you can share with friends, other mothers, other dads, when they're worried about their sons. Yeah, because boys aren't going to talk to each other about it. Nope, they'll never talk to each other about it. It has <laughs> to be a parental issue, or they have to be old enough to be, to be desperate, to be normal. Yes. All right, so thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin 
and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.